are here midway through day two of three days of coverage of Dell Tech World. My name is Savannah Peterson, and joined here by my fabulous co-host, Dave Vellante. What a morning we've had, my friends. I know, and I'm excited, because services equals value. That's where it happens, you know? I love product, we, we love yeah, product. We do, we, we do. We love hardware, we're, we love software. We're geeky enough that we can, yeah. services is where the, the money meets the road, I always <laughs> say. Well, and particularly in the AI revolution right now, so fantastic, we have quite the services duo from, Gel, from Dell joining us right now. Doug Schmidt, and, or I'm sorry, Doug Schmidt and Scott Beals, thank you so much for being here. It's fabulous to have your smiling faces on our stage. I can imagine, we were talking before we went live, we're having a moment right now. Doug, what does it feel like for you to be here at Dell Tech World with all the buzz happening, the announcements, the great stock price? <laughs> well, it's clearly, on, AI is clearly on everyone's mind. I think if you look at the value Dell brings in the broadest portfolio and in working with all our customers while they're here and seeing what AI can deliver for them, it's hard not to walk away super excited about the possibilities, whether it's commercial, healthcare, education, government, there's just nothing that won't be touched by this in, in a good way, and we're looking forward as part of the services organization to helping our customers achieve that goal. Yeah, and you get to see, you probably get to see so many interesting customer use cases. I want to talk about that in a little bit. Scott, what about for you? What's it like for you here? Coming to meet all your friends, seeing all the AI celebrities? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Energy's amazing. And uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion around professional services, particularly around what we're doing in, in AI, and hoping to accelerate customer transformation there, support the AI factory. So yeah, it's fantastic. You and I met at GTC, mm -hmm. which I said was the most important event in the history of computer industry events. I really, I stand by that. With all due respect, to <laughs> but it was really transformative in, in my mind. I, I wonder if, if you guys could think about, or help us think about the services opportunity here. I think about the Hadoop, go back to the big data days, and if, when you analyze the market, it was all services, because it was so complex, and it fell over. So. I don't think it's the same dynamic here because ultimately you're going to be using AI and teaching people how to fish as opposed to fishing, them for, fishing for them. But given that there's such a lack of skill sets, I mean, how do you think about organizing to, to help customers adopt AI but then be able to run it on their own and grow and innovate? What changes have you made? Well, you've heard a lot, um, and, I'm sh and, and the, your guests have, uh, from Dell and elsewhere have talked about our AI factory. And I think you can, uh, if you go up to that, you'll see obviously the infrastructure, our ecosystem, uh, and then on the top of that is services, and there's a reason for that, and you've seen also obviously it's fueled by data yeah. and the outcomes. But if you were to, and if you break that box out, it's, it's really a journey for our customers of helping them uh, achieve the value they're looking for from AI. And you can break it into really three different pieces. The first one is uh, helping our customers with their strategy and their use cases. And that's an important piece uh, because if you don't get that correct, it's pretty hard then to move to the next uh, number two of the of the three, and that is around the infrastructure, uh, the deployment, and then also the modeling, as you're saying. And and the reason I'm bringing this up is the third one is skill set. And I, I don't know that that's getting talked a lot, a whole, you know, a whole lot around. And not because people aren't interested in it, but it is an important piece. And we are seeing where we're helping our customers not only with one and two, obviously the data and the use cases and the strategy, but also in terms of uh, the infrastructure deployment. And then this third one, which is very important, the skill set. And what we're able to bring to the table there is we can help you anywhere on your journey that you want. We can also stay with you and help you manage the modeling and help you uh, at the end run it. And better yet, what we do a really good job of is the education side if you need the training. I think, too, it's, it's very multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. We like to think about AI yeah. and, and AI skills, but it's like, I need to apply AI to security. I need to apply AI to my IT ops. I need to de develop new workflows. You know, the whole BPO like thing. Customer experience, being I mean, yeah. yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so, a lot. so I think we tend to think about AI in this sort of narrow little stovepipe, but it's, it's not. It's kind of going to be ubiquitous. How, how do you think about that? Yeah, we're seeing that in our professional services portfolio uh, right now. So the way we're organized and aligned is to help customers drive you know, critical transformations in their business. So we have you know, essentially five different transformation practices within professional services. Uh, we have AI, obviously, now. We have multi-cloud. 
We have applications and data, resiliency and security, and modern workforce. And Dave, to your point, AI is not a standalone. We're seeing AI components across the portfolio, multi-cloud, resiliency and security, it's touching everything. So as we think through our portfolio of services around, professional services around consult, manage, education services, residency, it, it's cutting out across all of that, not just AI, but those other transformation areas. You're touching about 60,000 people on the services team. Dell has 120,000 employees total. Half the squad is out here helping people empower and enable their solutions, solve problems. You mentioned scaling up, and I'm glad you brought it up, because it's not just about implementation, it's about making sure all these systems are optimized and used properly and the data's safe. How do you get those 60,000 people inside your squads skilled up to be able to meet the customers where they're at right now? That's a great question. And, and it's an important one in the, in the aspect of, we're learning as well. Uh, in addition to helping our customers transform, which we love doing for their outcomes on and AI and then the five practices, that, but we're also going through our own internal transformation and we're seeing that in services. There's so much we can do uh, and we are leveraging inside of AI. We're using ourselves as the first test case and believe it or not, we actually started this six or seven years ago. We've actually talked about it uh, here with you before um, in that we've leveraged structured data very early on and digitized processes. And now with Gen AI, uh, we're actually turbocharging that uh, and removing steps that the customers don't mind to free up time for our team members to actually spend more time with our customers, which is what we're seeing, for, and helping them in that. And along that way, we've actually built uh, learning classes for our internal team so that they can actually become certified and trained uh, in what we believe are the future skill sets. So open communications, transforming internally, uh, learning and spending more time in front of the customers, that's what it's about. I it, think, oh go ahead, please. Oh no, I just, I, I love the, the free time. It's more time for developers to create and to code for people to interact with customers. We had McKinsey on the show with Google a couple weeks ago and, and he was saying that, that the winner of AI is actually going to be the dog because we're going to have more time to go out and walk <laughs> the dog and spend time with our families. And I love that analogy. I mean, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's letting your, your internal team as well as your partners spend more time doing the things they want to do, which is enhance the lives of their community. Exactly. When I think about um, applying Gen AI, put my CIO hat on, not that I was ever CIO, but I know a you lot of people. You can wear that hat. Talk to a lot. I'll empower you. Thank you. Yeah. So, the methodology around which I would approach, I have all these applications in my portfolio, and I have all these use cases, and people are just sending them in. You guys see this internally, I'm sure, at mm -hmm. Dell. Like, hey, what about this, what about this? You know, Jen Felcher is saying they just stack up. We have to prioritize. So I'd want to go through a rationalization exercise, and I, want, I would want to identify those workloads and applications that I think I could really replace or disrupt with Gen AI. But I'm fearful, because what if it doesn't work the way it's intended? So I have to maybe do some experimentation. So my question is, what's the methodology around which you go from those use cases, and how does it tie into the broader portfolio that CIOs and your customers are managing? Well, uh, I'll let Scott go into the details, but you mentioned Jen Felch, our CIO, does a great job, obviously. And we actually leveraged our professional services uh, with Jen, and so uh, this was a while back. Client zero. Exactly mm -hmm. right. Um, and, and so we took those 800 use cases and, and worked with her on a methodology that we had developed. And Scott, why don't you take them? Yeah, so, so it's really two dimensions. You take a look at um, the business and, and technical dimensions, the business value, the ROI you're going to get from a particular use case, and then the, the technical feasibility. You know, when the work we did with Jen and team, we have a model, a framework, you know, that has you know, over 20 different dimensions to it, um, where we analyze the use cases, and one of the big learnings coming out of it was if you have 100 use cases at the end of it, you don't want to think about it one through 100 in terms of going out and implementing individual use cases, you want to take a look at clusters, right? What are use cases that have commonality in terms of the users, the data, you know, the likely architecture, and having that drive where you go you know, from an implementation so, standpoint. Let me follow up on that because yeah. we, we have a term we used to call GRS, getting rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. and we never get rid of stuff in, uh, in IT. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is, is AI an opportunity to, to get rid of stuff or is it going to be more stuff? What are you seeing? Maybe from your own experience and you know, hopefully from customers. 
Well, I think, I, I think both, and, and I'll say this, get, getting rid of, I think what you're talking about is the complexity yes. inside of IT. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it it yeah. definitely helps with that, but just as important is it helps get rid of steps as we've digitized our internal processes and leveraged AI, we've streamlined this back to walking mm -hmm. the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, we've streamlined those processes and we have a happy path, we are, alert our managers now when those happy paths aren't followed real time and, and able to correct those again. And not only that, then use AI to shift that mean to find a better process. Now, that matters in terms of freeing up time, but in addition to that, uh, we are finding that we can streamline the technology as well. So, because technology tends to follow, uh, I would hope, in most cases, the process. Uh, so that you're able to automate both. So it's, 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 it's been a very interesting journey and we're taking all those learnings and yeah. applying that inside the professional service side as well. Really, really interesting job, so I'm curious, you don't have to throw anyone under the bus or use any explicit examples here, but what's the general energy when you're talking through people about finding their use cases? Are companies nervous, are they excited, do they feel FOMO, what's the Over, vibe? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. overwhelmed, yeah. There's so much opportunity, and right. it's, it's a matter of prioritizing it and figure where the biggest leverage points are. And it's, it's how do I get started, where do we get started? There's excitement around it, but it's it's a lot of, how do I how do I think about it, and how do we get things in motion? And a lot of hitting singles, too, yes. today, right. don't you think? Yes. I mean, it's not like, yeah. you're not seeing these, well, in some cases you're seeing these big moonshot goals, but generally speaking, it's like, hey, let's try it, Let's see, get some experience, figure out the skill situation, right. find a partner to help us sort through this. But eventually, CFOs are going to want the big payback, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so how do you think that will evolve? Maybe again, from your own experiences internally, because Dell is like a perfect example of a, a big company that can drop a lot of money to the bottom line through better automation and, and AI, and then you can bring that those learnings to the customer, it's almost like you're you're ahead of way ahead of the customers, I would think, in, in many cases. I don't know if you're seeing that. Well, we are hope and I know when you talk to Yvonne, hopefully you don't bring that up our CFO so you can yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll make sure I'll make sure yeah. you need this sharp lady yeah, 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 all yeah. over this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> um, that no this, that, that's right. And I think look you this comes in a journey of like I said removing steps. I want to be very clear on this one though. We're removing steps and improving the processes that don't impact the customer, they actually help the customer experience. Right. And, and that's, a, that's an important first. And then the second one is, is we talked about, you brought this up, this great point, of helping train and uh, also build the skill sets for the future of the internal team and bringing them along. The third piece of this is the culture. And look, this is a model change. Uh, this is new to people, how we're running stuff. I think we just talked about the digitization of the processes. Think now, I and the rest of my entire leadership team have the data real time, real time on how we're performing for that service and where the issues and the errors are at. So all of a sudden the managers aren't bringing and showing you where the issues are at. You're actually working with them real time on it. That's a pretty big change. So there's a cultural change, there's a skill set change, yeah. the model to get the additional efficiencies all while improving the customer experience. You know, there's so many opportunities here. I think of healthcare, I think of automotive, I think of manufacturing. One that came up the other day on a breaking analysis we were doing was supply chain. And you think about supply chain as really a batch job. You know, there's a problem in the warehouse and, you, and then you, somebody has to fix it the next day. Mm -hmm. And the customer gets impacted. To your point, Doug, you're taking out steps. Imagine if, you know, when the, 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 the whatever you're going to pick is not there, is somewhere else, and you don't have to wait a day. You can, in real time, actually have the forklift go get it, put it on the truck, so that the customer doesn't get impacted. I mean, there's like thousands of those examples. <laughs> Are you seeing any that like really excite you? Healthcare, obviously, is one that's, I think, ripe. I mean, it's a passion of Dell's, if nothing else, quite and, literally. And, and Michael, yeah. in particular. Yeah. Um, are there any that like stand out that you're like, this is really going to be one to watch? In terms of use cases, uh, there's so many out there across all verticals, uh -huh. it's, it's hard to pick one, it's hard to, to land on one. I think one of the use cases, we're seeing a lot of excitement in our customer base right now, is around digital assistance. 
Um, you've heard from City of Amarillo um, yeah. around how they're using it to improve information access to, to citizens. Case. Great yeah. use case. Use yeah. Case. Talk about inclusion too. Absolutely. Yeah, which really matters. Right. I yeah. think people forget that's going to be a big part of AI. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I think we'll see, continue to see ones that are applicable across verticals, like digital assistant. There's really interesting use cases that are all vertical specific by retail, manufacturing, pharma. Oh, you got to promise, when you, when you find these, you bring them on theCUBE, like the city of Amarillo, and we mm -hmm. can sort of profile them for, for our audience. Yeah, Rich, mm -hmm. Rich Grayson, their CIO. People see that and they go, wow, okay. And, and, and Rich was saying that he's working with other cities mm -hmm. to help them adopt this thing. That's the great thing about you, you know, local governments is, you know, they're not like trying to hide the stuff. Right, you know, it's not competition in the same, saying. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a classic and a very good example of, you know, look, governments are, are they're, they're us, right? Uh, and, and so when they're able to bring that together, as you're saying, the inclusion and all of the great assets they have and bring them to the customers and I, I'm sure Rich, as he very well says, uh, only 25, 24% of his, his constituents, English isn't a first language and right. so he's able, to get closer with those folks in terms of the what's available from the government services, what, how they can help, uh, that's a powerful story. Yeah. I mean, he mentioned that one of those middle schools, they speak 67 different languages. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can't imagine, I mean, it's it's mind-blowing, and we think, we, we talk about hyper-customization with AI all the time, but what a brilliant use case for it. What a great way to go in and be able to help save people's lives. So given that you, I, and I, I love it, you, I could tell you don't want to pick your favorite child here when we're talking <laughs> about <laughs> use cases. I totally understand that. But I am curious, are you seeing any industries adopt this more successfully or more rapidly than other industries? Or is it completely spread across verticals? I, from my point of view, it seems to be spread across. And a lot of POCs, a, yeah. a lot of early it's deployments. What I've been feeling a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's back to that point that a lot of um, organizations are at that first you know, step or two of understanding the use cases. Once they prioritize it, then standing up POCs, starting to, to start to play, with their, play around with it, test it, experiment. Um, so, yeah. but I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty even across the verticals that we've seen. Um, I think some of the verticals are going to have different dynamics. A lot of it may end up being by size. So I think one of the things that we'll end up seeing is larger enterprises, for example, may end up replicating the private cloud model where they provide AI as a service to internal stakeholders rather than having or separate business units, separate departments going out and standing up their own use cases. So. Oh, that's interesting. But, yeah. I, yeah. but I also think, look, it's not, the, the commercial side is is fairly straightforward and the, well, not easy, straightforward to see all the great things that could occur in there. But think about education as you're bringing this yeah. up. Individualized education for the individual, uh, when you teach all of a sudden you're able to identify work courses right away for the, what you, an individual needs. Mm -hmm. And then think about the, we just talked about the city of Amarillo, but the government's, going to, government's being able to get closer to their citizens and what they can do in terms of that, and healthcare. So it's, the verticals and the industries are important, but I think this is, this is going to be a model change for more than just the, the commercial I don't know if you guys side. saw the Sal, Sal Khan demo. Have you seen this? With his kid, so his Sal Khan, you know, Khan yeah. Academy. Yeah, yeah. He's there with his kid, like 14 year old kid, and he's talking to the AI saying, I, I want you to help tutor my child on this geometry problem, but don't give him the answer. Just nudge him, and it, it was like, find the hypotenuse. And he, he did the wrong one, she goes, no, no, it's the opposite of the right angle, can you find it? And then he draw, and it's like, very good. And I mean, it's just amazing, right? And oh, they were, yeah. They were talking, they weren't typing. No, they were talking. Well, have, have you so, seen Moxie, the little robot? Yeah, 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 yeah Moxie, the Moxie insane. robot. I love so. Moxie, she's adorable. <laughs> we had Moxie on the show, actually. And, and that's personalized education, not just in the in the teaching and the coaching, but also for, for neurodiverse learners and for folks yeah. with different, I'm super so, dyslexic and it's so, so cool re, to see. That, that's a, that is a really so cool to see. The yeah. reason I bring it up is because last year, we saw Project Helix. Yes. And you're like, oh, okay, GPUs and servers. <laughs> this year, we see the AI factory. So Helix becomes the AI factory. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think forward, like what are we going to see next year? Well, let's <laughs> ask him. We might have some people. What are we going to see next year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly uh, we're learning every, I mean it is, you, you know how fast this is moving. So I think you're going to obviously see this uh, continue to be turbocharged. But look, we're going to build off of that. What, you, what I can tell you uh, in, in all this learning is we're learning internally by actually running very fast. 
We're also then helping our customers and we learn every single day through them and then the technology of our ecosystem, right? And, and building that, but what you can tell you is we'll stay close to the outcomes of what the customers are looking for, make sure we build the services to deliver those. I think you're going to see us talk more about networking, mm -hmm. uh, which will be an important piece of, of this stack and this for services of what we can do. I think you'll talk to about more about the outcome-based experience services and delivering those as well, and then pulling it together end-to-end -end for our customers. I mean, and, yeah. And, and I think when you think about that transformation journey and the fact that most customers today are focused on use cases, the next shoe to drop will be data. So I would anticipate right. a year from now we're going to be talking much more about data and how organizations are Very true. managing data, thinking about data, scaling it. You know, yeah. for, to, to support AI use cases. I think that'll be a bigger focus next year. Okay, so, so today you're spending more of your time with customers, or a lot of time, on helping them sort through sort of where the, what the business case is. What are the use cases and, in the AI product? And, and, and uh, the next logical, and it, it probably is linear, right? Use case, data, little POC, mm -hmm. and then scale. It, it, it is, but it's interesting. But, There's customers in different pieces pieces of that journey, in spaces of that journey. We've had examples of, uh, an example being of a, a, a German uh, high-tech uh, company for cybersecurity research institute, and they actually had the use cases and the technology, what they were looking for to go faster was deployment of the solution, uh, okay. and the physical deployment, and then actually helping just get the model deployed very quickly. And so, and then we have other instances, like with a large communication provider, where it was actually a little bit more upfront in terms of the use cases. And, and so we can help them anywhere inside that journey. Interesting, so from an organizational standpoint, Doug, how do you accommodate that? Is it like a, a kitchen where all those chefs are cross-trained? Or do you have to sort of think about, well, today the, the bell curve is toward business case expertise, and now we're going to have to shift it to you know, data expertise, or, 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 is, or is your team pretty much cross-trained? No, that's where we do have specialized skills. So there is, to a certain extent, you can cross-train for more of the consultative, advisory, use case type work, but when we get into things like data, implementation, model selection, use case, deployment, those are typically specialized skills and you know, we build the, the capability to go deliver that. I suppose underutilization is not a problem these days. No, but, it is not. <laughs> uh, you don't really have to worry about that, so I won't even ask that question. <laughs> yeah, underutilization is not the issue. Uh, I think everyone's excited. Wow. Back to the skill sets. Uh, got, yeah, I, I was just saying, everyone's chomping at the bit, right? Everyone's exactly like little right. ponies waiting to get out on the racetrack. Oh, this was fantastic. Scott, Doug, thank you so much for spending time with Thanks, us guys. today. Thanks, And, having, and having sharing you. in this thrilling week with all of us. And Dave, thank you always yeah. for the fantastic questions and insights. And thank all of you for being a part of our fabulous fabulous community here, day two at Dell Tech Week. We're here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.